All right, so I just got the new button in for vocal cues. The way that vocal cues are now is that I have to pause before I say it. That's just the way it is. And I've tried other stuff. It doesn't really work that well. So I have to pause, then I can say the vocal cue and then it works. But I have a button on the Twiddler, which is the guy that I use for the live shows, the hand remote. I have a button on there that resets the listening. So I could be in the middle of a sentence, hit that button, and then it resets listening. So then I could be in the middle of the sentence, then I can say the cue and it'll work. But if I don't have that controller, which I'm sitting at the desk or whatever, it doesn't work. And I have a lot of vocal cues set up for uh, Reaper now. And rather, when I'm in the production process, rather than like pausing to do stuff, it'd be nice to just hit a button and then just like the thing. And then I can do the vocal cue. And so it's like, it's like the eternal hotkey or something for me. And uh, I tried another button yesterday and I have another switch and it's just like the foot switch. Can you see? Can you see the, oh, 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 there, over there. The, see those lights? That's the uh, foot switches. That's my pocket. FYI, that's my, po my pocket was sticking up. Uh, <laughs> uh, right there, the foot switch is right there. And those switches, I had another one of those and I tried it, but it's really loud and it's bulky and big. And the micro control of the Arduino was connected right to it. So it took up a lot of space. It just didn't work. Uh, so I got a button overnighted. It's this guy. And uh, I need to make a housing for this. And then I'm going to need to solder it and then program the Arduino board to be MIDI. And then I can feed this into the streaming PC. I just hit this button and then it'll reset the vocal cues. Show tech desk. Get closer. Okay, so this is the button. And the housing needs to be... Uh, the hole that this button's, I'm just going to make a little box. So the hole, so the hole needs to be 15.5, but I'll do 16. Yeah, I'll do 16 millimeters for the hole because the, the lip for the hole is 17 and a half. So if it's 16, I'll have some to play with there. So I'll do 16 for the hole. The box itself, I think I'm, I think I'll do, yeah, let's see. Like I'll do 20. Yeah, around 20 by 20. So it'll be square. And then from where it connects to the box, to the, to the bottom of the box, 23 looks about good. So 20 by 20 by 23, and then the hole, 16. So 20 by 20 by 23. And then it also needs a little hole in it for the wiring to come through. But what I could do is just not have a bottom. And then I could carve out a hole i could design the hole or i could just carve it out but yeah i think we should have it so it doesn't have a bottom that's probably the way to do it so it's going to be 16 for the hole and then 20 by 20 by 23 cool let's do that show front show front so i need to show front and then i need to do this there we go okay Ooh, once this ring is on, I didn't think about that. How big is the ring? Can the ring, is the ring bigger than 20? Three, 20. No, but with it being 20, does the ring turn? At its widest point, is it 20? Ooh, I didn't think, ooh, look at that. It's 21.3 at its wide. So the wheel, the ring, I wouldn't have been able to tighten it against the box if I wouldn't have measured the ring and the ring at its widest point is 21.3. So I guess I need to do 22, 22 by 22 by 23. I could just do 23 by 23 by 23 and then it'd be a cube. Maybe we should do that. Let's do that. Let's do 23 by 23 by 23. That'll make it easy. That'll make it super easy. Yeah. Okay. So let me think about this. So in Blender, we're in, we're in Blender now and I have this uh, file in Blender set up. So this is my 3D printing plate. You can see the outline here and we're basically just going to hit shift A and we're going to add a cube and then I'm going to scale this cube up until it's 23 by 23 by 23. There it is. Nice. And then, uh, oh, I need a number. I need the number um, pad for this situation. If I hit one here, 
uh, and then we zoom in you hit edit and then all and then g and now i can move it up i wonder if i hit control does control do it no shift shift is small but anyway that's that's basically it because if i come up here ooh ah I come here. I want it. I want the origin. So the origin. I want it to be lined right up with the origin. All right. We're talking like microscopic level now. I mean, we are so close. Like we're talking like we're at like the quark level now. Like, I don't even know what part of the actual thing I'm on with it being. Is that like the line of, I don't even know. I don't even know what's going on there with those lines. <laughs> but it's basically good to go there. Okay, cool. So now the origin of the thing is at the bottom, which is where we want it to be. And then this is the box. And uh, it's been a minute since I like actually did modeling in Blender. So I'm trying to like remember what I'm even like, how to even do this. But we do have a box. It's 23 by 23 by 23. And I'm going to apply all of the stuff. So now the scales, it just its regular thing. It's 23 by 23 by 23. And it's good to go. That sure does look bigger than, I mean, I guess it's not. Yeah, I guess it's fine. I think the plate might be undersized. I might have not sized the plate right. Anyway, it doesn't matter, dude. Uh, so we need a 16 millimeter uh circle here in the top and we want the bottom to be empty i'm trying to remember how to ah yes yes okay so you hit three you select the face you go into edit mode you hit three you select this bottom face i guess probably what i should do though now that i'm thinking about it is i should probably do it from the act as though it's upside down right now because that's how we're gonna print it. So rather than designing it and then turning it upside down, I think I should just design it upside down. And so this face, we're gonna inset this face and uh, let's inset it. It's not telling me how much it's inset right now. I'd say let's inset it half a millimeter maybe or a millimeter, probably a millimeter. So if it's 23, it's 22 and then 21, so it will work. So let's inset it uh, one millimeter and I'm trying to remember how you view, how you view um, distances. Okay, shape measurement, edge length, uh, edge angle, face area. Yeah, I think if we were to uh, hit that face, and then I think it's... um. Is it control I? No, it's uh, control R. Yes. So now if I do this and then I hit this and I select this line, so it's saying it's 0.6 millimeters. That line is 0.6 millimeters long. So that's not good enough. So what we want to do is go into face mode and then we want to scale this down. Oh. If that's 21, that means that's 22, that's 23, so that's one millimeter. Okay, cool. So yeah, it's one millimeter now. Math. All right, so then what you do is you go, so we have that face, and now we can, uh, let's see. Now we can extrude it down, and we will extrude it down, because this is also 23, so we'll extrude it down to 20. 22 because 23 from here i always forget you know you forget it's like oh yeah i'm dealing with 3d so i got to make sure that whatever i'm doing takes into account the fact that this thing is 3d so if we're 23 yeah that's not going to be enough okay that's okay that's okay because uh at this point what we can do is we can uh select the whole cube and then we can just actually hold on. So we go here. Let's undo that. 
So let's just get back to the cube itself. Okay, so now we're at the cube. Now, I can go here. Let's make it, since we need to make it. Oh, wait, no, that's still okay, though. Because it's the ring that's going to be down. Okay, so yeah, 23 is fine. Yes. Okay, yeah, it was fine. We're doing this live. We're doing it live. So we got that. And then I'm just going to scale. So this face, we got the face selected. Just going to scale the face down until it's 21. Okay, so that's one millimeter. Okay, so then you go here. And then you can hit E, which extrudes it. And now we're going straight down. And we this is 23, but we want to give it like a millimeter. I would say probably, right? A millimeter? Maybe we can make it two millimeters thick. That'll make it nice and strong. How, how big is a millimeter? One millimeter. Let's see. One millimeter. Let me get down to one millimeter here. One millimeter. That's how thick it'll be. Oh, yeah, we need to give it some more. We'll give it two millimeters. So it will go down to 21. So that's two millimeters between, between these two spots. Okay. So, so now... Uh, that's great. So now we have this box. It's cool. But now we need to create a circle. Now, how do you create a circle? I feel like, uh, uh, how do you create a circle? Because if you just inset it, that won't work. It needs to be an actual circle that's 16 millimeters. Is it was it what was it 16? I think it was 16, right? I need a circle that is yeah 16 millimeters. Uh, create a circle. Create a circle. How do you create a circle? That's right. You create uh, a boolean. I create a. You need to create a cylinder. Okay, here we go. So you create a cylinder. And the cylinder's right in the middle, so that's perfect. Now, we need it to be 16 millimeters. So we're going to scale it out everywhere except the Z. No. Okay, that's Z. Alt Z. Everywhere except... Wait. Scale it everywhere... Is alt not working? Uh, shit, maybe it's shift Z. So scale it. Ah, yes, there you go. Beautiful. Okay, so it needs to be 16 millimeters. Exactly. And there it is. And now we're going to subdivide it. How do you subdivide? I. It's so funny. Like, th this is so basic for blender modeling and I'm like how do you subdivide but it's subdivide uh you want to subdivide how do you subdivide I'm just going to hit s no that's scale uh to subdivide how do you subdivide how do you subdivide is it a it is it uh is it a subdivide monitor or uh uh, monitor modifier. Do we have subdivide modifier? Solidify subdivision surface. Decimate boolean. We're gonna do, use that in a minute. Oh, dude, how do you subdivide? Um, right click, shade smooth, convert to duplicate. Uh, how about object? I feel like we're getting close. Transform, no, apply, snap, join, asset, parent, collection. Oh, am I going to have to Google it? I think I'm going to have to Google it, dude. I'm going to have to Google subdivision. As soon as I see this, I'm going to be so mad at myself and be like, dude, are you kidding me? How could you have forgotten that? Okay, I'm going to Google subdivide. How to subdivide in Blender. Uh, subdivide. 
Okay. Mesh. Subdivide. Okay, so let's see if let's see if that works. Object. Mesh. Select view. Okay, object. That's weird. It's not showing up. All right, hold on. Um. Oh, you have to do it. You have to do it in edit mode. Okay. Uh, I think. Let's see. So if I'm in edit mode now and I right click, then it's subdivide. Okay. And then you can do this. All right, I, I don't want to see that anymore for now. I want to turn off the uh, measurements because I can't see anything. Okay, so that's that's not how I want to subdivide though, right? Yeah, that's not doing what I want. What I want is I want to, if you do like alt, is it, or what is it, control? Okay, control. Okay. No. Oh God. Shift. No. Alt. Ah, there you go. Okay. Now I want to subdivide just these. No, it's weird. Like, oh, is it, maybe it's loop cut. Dude, can I just actually, now that I'm remembering, can I just shade smooth this and then go into the normals and do auto smooth? No, it's still weird. Yeah, so no, we don't want that. We want to actually do it for real. So shade flat. Okay. Oh, I know what it is. I think I know now. I think it's that uh, if we delete the cylinder, I think that when you add, are we still in edit mode? No. When you add a cylinder, the cylinder, you can do it right then. Vertices. There it is. There it is. So it's not that I'm subdividing. It's that I'm adding vertices when I do it here. So let's do 250 vertices. That looks pretty smooth. There you go. And then the radius should be what, eight? Eight. There, God, that was a pain. Holy moly. Okay, cool. All right, and that's that. And then, now you do a Boolean. Okay, now the, I think the object, is the uh, cube, is that right? Or is that wrong and we want to do put the Boolean on the cube and then the object is going to be the cylinder. Uh, oh, that's right. So we want to scale this on the Z, make it bigger. It's funny, I can't tell if it's like coming up, but it, it, it definitely is, right? Maybe it's not yet. Maybe I still haven't. Okay, it's definitely coming up now. Okay, but it doesn't look like it's the Boolean's working. Because cylinder object. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Let's put the Boolean on the cylinder itself and then make the object the cube. Okay. 
Oh, what's that? Okay, so the cylinder has been cut by the cube. So yes, I think we need to do cube and then put the Boolean and then object is the cylinder. And so now, and now if we, if we do that, can we apply it? And then if we don't view the cylinder, okay. Holy moly. Okay, cool. I think that's that. I think we did it. <laughs> All right. And then we let's, we want to do one more Boolean for the cables to come out. And the cables aren't going to be big. I mean, we're talking like maybe th three millimeters. The cables will fit through. They're really small. Yeah, three millimeters. So we want to create another cylinder. We're going to create another cylinder. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. And then we're going to, what the, that's not 90 degrees. What the heck is that? Um, let's undo that. Rotate X 90, enter. Okay. We're going to bring it along the, that axis. And then we want to, uh, let's see. We want to bring it down and then uh, we'll scale it along the Y so it's nice and thick so it'll go through the wall. And then is it, uh, it looks to be about halfway. I mean, it doesn't have to be halfway, but right now we're gonna scale it along the X, do like that. Let's scale along the Z. And now we want to know measurements. If it'll even show us the measurements. Let's see if it'll even show us the measurements. Measurements. Geometry. Uh, is it because we're not in edit mode? It's probably because we're not in edit mode, huh? Then I come, yep, there we go. Edge length, no. Base area. Base angle, edge angle. I guess edge length. I don't know. That's two millimeters. See, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of just eyeball. Oh, oh, holy moly. That's not, oh, we're not in the right spot at all. We need to be up here. There we go. And then let's just, uh, let's just scale it up. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be great. Like, I don't have to, we don't have to be exact. You know what I mean? Okay, let's select that, and then let's go into edit mode, and then we should see. So we're not seeing the, ah, okay, cool. Well, okay, so we know that that's, if we go into wireframe view, we can see. So this is two millimeters. So it's not, it's not quite there yet. So we need to take this cylinder. Let's go back into object mode cylinder. Let's scale it up just a little more. I mean, it, again, it doesn't have to be crazy and I can always just use a file and grind it more. Okay. Let's go back to real view material view. No, no un, non wireframe material view turn wireframe off. Okay. And then we need to create a Boolean again, Boolean. This time it's going to be cylinder one. And if we apply it, we, okay, cool. There you go. <laughs> we did it. Okay. So now we have the housing for the button. This is it. This is great. Okay. So next thing you need to do is export this. We need to apply everything. So on the cube, we want to apply all transformations and the cube's ready to go. That looks good. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. And then uh, now we uh, save this, save, save it as or export it. We export it as, I think we export it as, uh, as STL. I think we export it as STL. Yeah, I think that's what it's going to be. And, uh, and that's, yes, that is correct, because we have STLs in here already. 
button box XTL. I think uh, I think that's it. I don't think we have to do anything else. I applied the stuff. So there, it's exported. Now, show front. Show front. If I open up this, okay, button box, and then I'm just going to open it up real quick and see if we are in good, good shape here. Button box STL. If I just double click on it, I think the software should open. All right, it's been a 25 minute video. Oh no, I, I, I exported out the floor too. And all the stuff. Oh no. All right, so let's get out of here. We just want to export an STL of the selection. So if we do export STL, just select selection only. Okay, button box, export. Okay, cool. And now if I do that again, STL, open it up. It's going to open up the 3D software. There we go. A button box. Yay, we got a button box. We got a button box. Now, interestingly enough, it, it's got blue here, and I don't know what that means. Let's, let's just do prepare, see what happens. Okay. It's acting as though it's cool. If we look at uh, the layers of how it's going to do it, That looks, that looks good. Like, cool. That's, that's awesome. All right. Cool. Show front. I'm just going to click save to file button box. It saves it on the desktop. Just saved it. Uh, and I have a thumb drive right here. I'm going to plug that in to the computer. I'm plugging in now. All right, it's plugged in. And uh, the drive is visible. Uh, let's see. Got it here, button box, I just dragged it over. And uh, I think that's good. Now, am I? No, I'm not on mobile. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm gonna get this, get the drive plugged into the 3D printer and I'm gonna print the box out. And then we're gonna have a housing box for this guy. I hope that was fun. 30 minutes to uh, to build the little box. But hey, you've seen it done. It happened. We did it. <laughs> and hopefully it works. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.